Dun dun, bum 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 bum. Hi, welcome back once again. It is time for the comics coffee table. Pull up a chair, grab a cuppa, whatever it is you're shoving under your nose today. Ah, hot cup of coffee. Huzzah, indeed. And happy new comic book day. <clears throat> it's Wednesday. And, uh, yeah, you can either hump this week. You can either hump this week or let this week hump you. It's Wednesday's hump day, getting over the hump of the week. But, you know, there, there's a dirty joke in there somewhere, always for me. Ha 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 ha. Zzz. <laughs> That's right. These two get along quite famously. They get a charge from each other. Oh my goodness. So oh, you and your puns. Thank you so very much. It's the Comics Coffee Table where we take a coffee break together. We hang out and talk about comic books just for a couple of minutes in our busy day and then get back to our lives. We run our lives and not have our lives run us. That's a good that's a good deal. I like that deal. I like that deal a lot. And we also run our new comic book day. We don't let our new comic day, uh, our new comic book day run us. <clears throat> whatever that means. <laughs> but whatever it does, I'm glad you're here. It's 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern daily. We talk about comic books. We are usually a reboarding, reboxing, and rebagging show. I need to re reboard, rebox, rebag my entire collection. It's about 20 years worth of Wednesdays. And um, and all the fun getting here. <laughs> and yeah, I got about seven or eight long boxes. They all need new boxes, definitely. They all need, uh, you know, new boards. Like, they need boards. <laughs> I was never big into boards. Now I see the error of my ways. But, you know, it's just like um, you know, hey, live and learn, you know, and that's what we're doing on this show. I'm buying these supplies at my local comic book shop, and uh, I need supplies, don't you? Well, please buy your supplies at your LCS, your local comic shop. Um, I'm not using the big box stores or my online supply chain for the copious amount of supplies that I need in this um, Herculean endeavor of of you know you know just f handling every single floppy i've bought in about the past 20 years ah <clears throat> anything bought before then i think it's been lost to history it happens right and um it's new release day so hopefully this is us right now at my local comic book shop, I'm getting this. I'm getting that. Or maybe I've already gone a little or I've noticed <clears throat> I get there a little earlier. It's new release day. I mean, I hear that there's a line sometimes out front. Now, like they've been sold out of Amazing Spider-Man. The past three weeks, I've been uh, the past three times I've been looking for it. 26, 27, and 28. Well, let's see. I mean, like, maybe if I go a little... Maybe if I'm there at 11, will I be in line? Is that something I would be interested in doing? Usually not. Nah. But, uh... It's, it's, you know, it means getting there, at, like, right at 11. I mean, like, no. I'd rather be there closer to, to showtime and hang out and talk to you guys about new comic books. A new comic book day. You know, hence our show. Our Comics Coffee Table. Maybe I'm bellied up to the bar right now with a pint of Guinness and uh, some some chicken tenders and french fries as I'm off to do. Yeah, like, eat some finger food, please, and then handle your fresh, funny books. <laughs> but that's just being human and, and, you know, wipe your hands off before you, you handle your funny books, please. Indeed. I like going to the, uh, the bar in the Irish bar in my village square. Has no televisions. They play Irish music and old country music, and the Dixie Chicks too. They love playing the Dixie Chicks there. 
I, I, I really enjoy listening to Dixie Chicks music there. You know, just very laid back and wide open spaces in this dark Irish bar. <laughs> Ain't that cute? All righty. We have 91 different. We're not going through all 91. No. Here's go the ones that, you know, <clears throat> set off our radar. It's a big Marvel week. And also, the we've been talking about it also all week as well, coming into event season. It's time for... Excuse me. It's time for Night, night Terrors to begin. So let's get to it. Yeah. And to, but hopefully you're going to be at your local comic book shop today. It's Wednesday, new release day. Maybe you save that for Saturday. I don't know. You know, just, you know, when do you go to the LCS? I, you know, a couple of, I know a couple of people in the live chat. We all go weekly and, or when we can fit it into our busy schedules as well. But it's, it's always nice to hear from everyone out there in the live chat and in the comments, like, uh, such as like where you're, <clears throat> well, don't dox yourself, but you know, that you go to an LCS and that you're getting new releases. And while you're there, you know, seriously, think about picking up some some snugs or some boards. Why not? They could use the business. All right. We go to a nice little website called leagueofcomicgeeks.com slash comics slash new hyphen comics. That would be the URL, the universal... The Universal Resource Locator. It's part of its HTTP, its Hypertext Transfer Protocol. <clears throat> HTML, Hypertext Markup Language. Coding. Every web page has the matrix behind it. It's true. <laughs> All right, we got Daredevil. Th we got a whole bunch of comic books I'm not buying. Um... We talked about Star Wars comics the other day. It's Star Wars issue number 36. Disaster looms for the Rebel Alliance. Dun, dun, dun. $3.99 for 28 pages. And um, that's the going rate, dude. Let's see. And uh, it's cover dated September 2023. Final cutoff date is June the 5th. Oh, okay. So this is like, yeah. It's Leia's Impossible Mission. Dun, dun, dun. Disaster looms for the Rebel Alliance. With the discovery that the Empire is building a second Death Star, the Rebels are on the verge of despair, but Leia Organa has devised an impossible mission to remind both the Rebels and the galaxy how to hope. It is the Falcon's time to shine as the fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy flies into the belly of the beast. It really, it's uh, written by Charles Sewell. Uh, uh, Andrea DeVito is the artist, and um, it's got a really nice cover too. Like he's got, he's got Palpatine, and he's being Palpatine. Ah, you know, <laughs> we and uh, there are wow, there are variant covers for this too. There's a there's a really nice variant cover that looks like an old um, um, Kenner action figure. I like that, and it's, so it's but the in the issue numbers is on, is on a, on a on a toy store price tag. It's a it, it's a blister pack. The old and it's it's Padme Amidala. Then there is um, there's an or a, a Jerry Ordway. It's a, a vintage homage a vintage homage variant. It's cute, you know. I, no, I'm not buying it. I just, I'll always be a Star Wars fan, but no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna buy Disney Star Wars comic books like that. I mean, red, white, and uh, black, white, and red. Darth Vader, black, white, and red was just a, a different experience for me. I was looking to see different artists, specifically Peach Momoko and Daniel Warren Johnson's. Those were its big selling points for me, and then then, then there was the Klaus Johnson story then there was the mark bernadin story so yeah i mean those i felt those were really good stories a little op uh, overpowered but nah. we got daredevil 13 for five for 3.99 x-men number 24 for 3.99 thor annual number one for 
36 pages, 499. Uh, Al Ewing is writing this. And, you know, who is Mythos? Enter Mythos when Modok, fueled by revenge and a refusal to ever again be someone else's pawn, seizes control of all of the Ten Realms but Asgard. Thor, the Allfather, must step in and regain control of the Ten Realms and the World Tree. But Modok's new cosmic power proves to be a greater threat than Thor could imagine, and he'll need the inspiration of some beloved friends from Midgard to reclaim and his realms and his awesome power. And so Odin's dead, and eventually, and every, I mean, that's why Thor will lose an eye, and, and he'll be Odin, and then his son will be Thor, and that's you know, Thor Odin's son. And hence the cycle continues, or 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 not. <laughs> but no, I'll probably pass on that. This is Venom number twenty-two, three ninety-nine. You know, twenty-eight pages. X Men twenty-four, three ninety-nine, twenty-eight pages. And I think that's twenty-two pages worth of story, and six pages of advert. You know, house ads. Um, oh wow, is that a J John Romita Jr. cover? That's it's um. No, it's Marco Tacheco. It looks a lot like uh, it's Chip Zdarsky. It's uh, Marco Tacheco. Chip Zdarsky is also he's doing double duty. He's doing Batman over on DC, and he's doing Daredevil on Marvel. That's cool. I mean, it's not about Marvel versus DC. It's about who's the you know. That's where you can see how talent still dictates. You know, a lot of what's going on, like in, in these two little realms of publishing. I mean, that he is the hot hand. He has also earned his spot, too. I, you know, I remember when, like, Sex Criminals came out. You remember Sex Criminals? Anyone? Anyone? No? <laughs> that was only about 15 years ago. When was Let's look at Sex Criminals. Wow, Sex Criminals comic. Book and not like sex criminals Wikipedia. We're reading from you guessed it the wiki. <clears throat> I got the first like three issues or four issues of this. Uh, it was a it was an image comic. It was written by Matt Fraction, but it was illustrated by Chip Zdarsky. And the first issue was published ten years ago, um, almost ten years ago, September twenty fifth, twenty thirteen. It's uh, since publication the series has the series has continuously received critical acclaim, but this is one of the first comic books that I ever knew the name Chip Zdarsky and um, and I've seen him come a long way ever since yeah great he's had a good career but uh, yeah I'm not buying Daredevil right now I don't know it's... so yeah there's Fantastic Four number 9 28 pages three ninety nine, written by Ryan North no not into it I mean there's Spider-Man number 10, 399, 28 pages. That's Dan Slotto Blocktavius. Can't get that because I'm not going to give so I'm not going to give that person the business. I'm not going to, you know, Mark Bagley is the penciler, which is great, you know. Uh John Dell's on inks. So, you know, it, it, you know, it looks nice. I don't know. I'm Mark I love the ongoing struggle of spidey artist conversation it's just like where does mark bagley fit he's very he's done a lot of spider-man but is he one of the best and there are a lot better examples of the hero i i feel that way too and um, but here we go image comics spawn issue 343 32 pages for 2.99 now that's a big thing that Todd McFarlane's chosen to do to sell Spawn at two ninety nine. I wonder, like, where all those extra ad pages, probably hawking his uh, uh, the, the McFarlane line of toys. Man, God bless Todd McFarlane; he's really good. But we have yeah, Star Wars thirty six twenty eight pages three ninety nine. <clears throat> I'm gonna pass on that. The Adventures of Superman, John Kent, number five. Three ninety nine on DC Comics, thirty two pages, and it, it appears that he's 
<clears throat> John Kent is still over in the in the Injustice universe. That's great. Doctor Strange. Monstrous number 45 on image. Mm -hmm. Night Terrors Batman number one for four ninety nine. It's forty pages. <clears throat> Written by Joshua Williamson. Mm -hmm. And there are six variant covers. And those are probably a dollar more. At least. Then you get into the really exclusive one. There's a one in fifty Dan Mora cover as well. I mean, how much will that go for? Exactly. Priceless, one could say. But Night Terror's Batman number one, that's four ninety nine. Also for five ninety nine. And why am I passing on Night Terrors? It's gonna mug my long box space with comic books I'm just gonna read once. And never look again. Like I bought Millennium back in 1987. Was that it? And just um, with the Manhunters and the huge crossover, and it was like every everything had a week on top, and it was a huge, huge crossover. Yeah, um, let's look that up. Millennium, DC Comics. I'm gonna read this from you guessed it, the Wiki. Wiki. Millennium was a comic book crossover event that ran through an eight-issue self-titled limited series and various other titles cover dated January and February 1988 by um, DC Comics. Yes. Written by Steve Englehart with art by Joe Staten. And it went from... Um, yeah, it was... Okay, it was a weekly. It was a weekly! That's right. And it came out... Um, and it came out pretty late too. Yeah, it was, it was, it was like yeah, February and January. Yeah, so it, that wasn't a summer event, but still, I was there. I got them every week, and you know, here I am. I'm a kid. Like you know, it's it's it's, I'm I'm 15 years old, and it's and they're getting me at 75 cents a whack for each one. But this one, yeah, 48 pages, nice and you know. Art by Howard Porter. And so this is Night Terror's First Blood. So this has got to be like the the perhaps the alpha issue. So First Blood number two might be the Omega issue. Will someone straighten me out in the comments or something on this one? I, I need your help on this because I'm kind of skipping this. Uh, a new villain named Insomnia. <laughs> I mean, seriously, the older we get, the more we struggle with sleep. And especially with the responsibilities and stresses we have. So, I mean, the big bad is something that we know. Um, <laughs> it's something that we conquer with. with um, oh, wow. There are eight variant title variant covers. There's a, a one in 666 Howard Porter cardstock signed by Howard Porter. That's, <laughs> that's sick. A one in 100 Jay Lee. Oh, wow. That's just... That's sick. There is a Howard Porter neon ink one that's pretty cute. I would, I it caught my eye, but no, I'm not spending six ninety nine for that. No, no, thank you. Okay, Star Wars Yoda number nine. We were talking about it the other day. There are eleven different Star Wars titles coming out between Marvel nine. And Dark Horse 2. 11 Star Wars comic books a month. Just give me one good one. No, it's got to be like, you know, it is 399, 28 pages, but it's written by Mark Guggenheim. All right, and his name's come up a bunch of, he's just, he's like a, a stable writer. He's a writer's writer. He's been writing, he's been doing this for, for decades. He's written a lot of stuff. So on its own, just for the writer alone, you're going to get probably a really decent Star Wars story starring Yoda, you know what I mean? And just in, just an adventure, you know? Size matters not part three. Hmm. Well, hello there. The Megadroid is on the march, and only Jedi Master Yoda and Anakin Skywalker can stop it. 
But what is the lesson Yoda is trying to impart on young Skywalker? Guest starring Obi-Wan Kenobi. You know, I would like to see more of like, just like young Padawan Anakin, you know, and younger Obi-Wan, like uh, just like pre-Clone Wars, but a couple of years after Phantom Menace. They're, they're out there. Plenty of it. Dark Horse has done plenty of Star Wars that's it's been shuff, shuffled off to the Legends category because of because of the you know the the, the, the edict of n- all new canon. Excuse me, don't mean to burp in your ear. That's gross, Sully. Let's see, X Men Before the Fall, Sinister Four. Oh, thanks. Edge of the Spider Verse number four. Uh, another is Alex Segura. And, and Daniel Kibblesmith and Taboo and um, Dream Spiders on the cover and Aranya and a headline and um, it's four ninety nine for 36 pages and that has three variant covers. I, don't know, I hope you're... I, you know, people people bag on Spider-Verse stuff a lot and why not? I mean, shit, it's there. Let's see. We've got Venom Lethal Protector 2, number 5. That's something I should be tuned into. Is that like Dave um, Dave Michelini is writing that? It's like, so you have the old writers, like Dave Michelini is doing Venom. You got Howard Mackey doing Danny Ketch's uh, Ghost Rider. You got Andy Nascenti doing um, Storm, uh, X, Uncanny X-Men Tales, set about the time where she's editing the book, you know, or about to edit the book, rather, you know, and that in the 80s. And so I should be tuned into something like this. An old an old Eddie Brock story. That would be cool. But I'm not. It's just, you know, I can, I can always go back and get it. It's always new if you haven't read it yet. For $4.99, we've got Poison Ivy number one. And there will be a number two. This is $4.99. So these are not $3.99 comics. They're, they're all $4.99 for 40 pages, though. And this has f- five variant covers. The variant covers are all pretty pretty cool looking. There's a Jamie McKelvey one that's pretty cool. Uh, they're all pretty cool looking. But, you know, it's just, yeah. Not I'm not I'm not buying it. No, not nibbling. But that, that so we got DC Comics Night Terrors the Joker number one. That's for $4.99. Written by Matthew Rosenberg. Um, yeah, and again, not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not falling for this one. Sorry. Uh, another one I'm not falling for, Steelworks number two, written by Michael Dorn, uh, TV's Commander Worf of TV, uh, Star Trek. Um, I number, issue number one was really, it bored me, and the art, I'm just finding it harder and harder to accept paying money for digital art that's printed out. Just like, why did you even bother? What's the point of it? You know, I just, you know, maybe you should just keep this online and just sell these as webtoons. Uh, and just, yeah, I don't know. We have DC Night Terror's Ravager number one for three ninety nine. There's your three ninety nine funny book sell. All right. Night Terrors number one. That's thirty-two pages for three ninety-nine. And it's Ravager. This is a uh, um, Rose Wilson. She's the daughter of, of 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 Slade Wilson, Deathstroke the Terminator. She's a on again, off again Teen Titan anti-hero, good gal, uh, reckless, um, wild gal. You know what I mean? The kind you don't bring home to mama. I guess I don't know. Um, <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, and there's there's a we ha- oh here we go. I'll be hoping these two are there. If they are, I'm going to take a chance on one of these. And uh, it's Clobber in Time number five by Steve Scroce, and it's gonna. I wonder if it's uh it's three ninety nine for twenty eight pages, and um, it concludes the first five issues. But will there be another issue? And this does not have any variant covers. Just want to say, no variant covers on Clobber in Time number five. But I mean, this conclu- I would love 
to see more clobber in time. It's been so fun. It's just like, um, or it's a lot like uh, the old Marvel two and one starring the thing. See, Marvel had two team up comic books in the, in the bronze age. You had Marvel team up with Spider-Man and, and any kind of like a B lister they were trying to put over or anyone, you know, what's going on. And then you had Marvel two and one, which was uh, Ben Grimm, the thing and his team up, uh, and just and they were great because they're just very like one and dones, and it's they they were just very fun, and it's good to see you know it, Ben Grimm and Peter Parker have such a you know invented like a social network. They're the ones with the coterie of of, of allies and friends and, and and teammates, and just just they they've touched so many people's lives and they interact so well. When it comes to snappy dialogue and interactions, um, it's just fun. So, Clobber in Time has uh, been a blessing. Uh, there was no, I mean, just, uh, I hope there's more. There's also going to be Captain Marvel Dark Tempest number one. Captain Marvel on Marvel Comics. So, this is um, Carol Danvers. It's four ninety nine. It's 36 pages. But it's written by Ann Nascenti. And she is just, she gets, she'll get my vote just because of the writer. You know, she's not the best writer. I'm not saying that, I mean, like, I was there for the, the those Daredevils. I mean, remember when he changed his costume? And um, <laughs> it was, a lot of that stuff was either great or kind of meh. Um, but she, but she edited those, all those late 80s X-Men books. Before it went super big, you know, the X-Men books, Uncanny X-Men in the 80s, they were either um, edited by Louise Jones, or Louise Simons, Wheezy Simonson, or Ann Ascenti. It's just, it was a great time. And I, I trust her. And I trust her with character voices. I have no idea what this is about. The Earth, Earth's mightiest, after facing off against the brood with the X-Men and losing someone she holds dear, Carol Danvers needs a break. She's not about to get it now. A slinky, a, a slinky new cosmic threat comes for Earth's mightiest, and they don't know who to recruit to really wreck Carol's world. A surprise legacy villain. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to check that out. I'm going to give that a chance at five bucks. But, you know, but that's the thing is you, they, they pair up like Dave Michelini on Venom, uh, Danny, uh, you know, Howard Mackey on Danny Ketch. And Annie Nassetti on Storm. The the art though, it's just the the mm, it's not great. I mean that Storm number two, the art was kind of so bad in places. It's like again, like he, he, we're paying for webtoons to be printed. You're wasting ink, paper, distribution, gas to get it there. You know, uh, comic shops, you know, shelf space for what? I mean, just the illusion of a serialized publication when this is already written for the print, for, for the for the trade. I don't know. I'm not trying to sound like a malcontent. Um, there's also okay for 4.99 Night Terrors Black Adam number one, 32 pages for 4.99 has five variant covers written by Jeremy Hahn, who is also one of the uh, the artist. I have no idea what this is about, but um, yeah, good luck, King of Kandak. I mean, yeah, I'm just not. I I'm I'm interested in from afar. I'm I'm interested in what you guys think about Night Terrors. If you're pleased with it, there's a lot of people in the chat that are, and I want to hear from you guys. And this Captain America issue number seven hundred and fifty Legacy. Uh, number 750 so and that one's a special uh 68 pages going for 7.99 it's got several writers several artists um i'm gonna pass no just it's you know i might start buying again with issue one when j uh jm dimatteis is starting to to write it i might not i don't know i usually don't pick up comics off the shelf and look at them and then get them i just get them and I get. I'm also an impulse buyer. I like to. I, I like a nice cover. I really do. 
got me. It, it gets me to you know, and then just uh, well, good cover can still sell a, 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 a mediocre comic book. That still works. And pretty much that's about it for the new releases that I'm gonna pick up. I'm still amazed that Archie Comics, 192 pages for a 9.99 World of Ju World of Archie Jumbo Comics Digest number 131. And it's uh, yeah okay. <laughs> Archie's still making Archie comics. Who buys Archie comics? Archie Digest comics. The only pl the last place I would see an Archie Digest comics would be like at the register at your local grocery store next to you know the Nat Geo and the TV Guide and the, and the soap opera thing and then the trash magazines my mom would like about celebrities and then uh, the Daily News uh, or the Weekly News that had like the fake headlines, uh, all that stuff. I mean, you don't see that stuff. You don't see Archie comics anymore, you know, out there. Yeah, that's about it. There's so many. Whatnot Publishing, Scout Comics, Antarctic Press, Sumerian Comics, uh, Opus Comics, Xenoscope, Frank Miller Presents. Um, yeah, Scout's doing a lot. But still, like, I mean, once again, it's like, what's the... what's what are you getting at? You know, with just pre-printing like web comics, like no, these are, these are digitally trying. No, they just something. I mean, about the light source or something. I don't know. I, did, I maybe I'm some kind of antediluvian prick, and I'm just being fussy, and uh, and I don't know what I'm talking about. But I'm not knocking digital art. It's just more of like, what is the point of printing this? I mean, it's. Uh, it doesn't look particularly great, and, and it's just, I, 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 yeah, huh? it's something I should be getting over, perhaps. Life's a series about getting over things that you find, you know, <laughs> you know, just this pleasurable, isn't it? Well, thank you so much for tuning in. It's been it's new release day, and we are going to be buying some comic books. Is anyone reading The Walking Dead Deluxe? What is that? Is it is that a new comic? Is that like are these reprints of old comics? I have no idea. I, I yeah, I I bought the last issue of Walking Dead and I thought that was a great place to walk away from that. I love how that it was kept under wraps and it was just yep, final issue like whoa i lent that out and never got it back uh well that's what you get though hey but still i was like it's it's um yeah watch what you lend out to people i guess we've been talking about comic books and we're going to talk about comic books every day for the rest of the year we are 3 p.m u.s eastern tune in and we'll find out who we're talking about when we turn the page tomorrow, please like and subscribe. I'd love to earn your subscription. Join us here at our very own Comics Coffee Table. Pull up a chair, grab a cuppa. Mm. Whatever it is you're shoving under your nose today, pal. God bless. Namaste. Good luck. We will see you again tomorrow in those funny pages. Ciao. Bye-bye.